I welcome you all to AWS Cloud Webinar on Kubernetes by Edureka. My name is Prashant. Let's get started with today's session. So, agenda, introduction on AWS, domains in AWS, introduction to Kubernetes, what is containerization, introduction to Amazon EKS, introduction to AWS. So, AWS, we all know it's a secure cloud service platform which offers compute, database, content delivery, and other functionality to help business scale and grow. Right? Indeed, AWS is one of the first you know, service provider to start offering cloud computing as a service. It was in the year 2006, AWS started offering cloud computing as a service, right? And it's been now 15 plus years. AWS is one of the unbeaten market leader in cloud computing space. The nearest competitor to AWS is Azure, followed by Google Cloud Platform. So these are the top three service provider when we talk about cloud computing space, right? And AWS has the highest market share with around 39 percentage of market overall market capital for cloud computing business, right? It helps organizations from different line of business to scale, grow, and also automate a lot of solutions making more efficiency i mean making your infrastructure more efficient and performance uh, you know performance effective right so various organizations like from manufacturing side unilever media industry netflix automation like bmw enterprises adobe so these are some top names but if you name it any fortune 500 organization they use aws to host their application and services on the cloud right and not only this, even US government has a dedicated AWS private cloud, right? So definitely AWS is one of the strong market leader in the cloud computing space offering various services across different domains. It offers around 175 plus different services across, you know, various lines of business, which includes your blockchain technology, satellite technology, robotics, your AR, VR, automation, development platform, network security, so on and so forth across different domains different lines of business right aws have different you know services available right so to name the different domains in aws so you have compute storage database migration network and content delivery management tools security identity and compliance messaging services so on and so forth these are which we have listed out okay so amazon web services it offers wide range of services across different domains as i was telling right compute like your ec2 lambda ecs so ecs is one of the subject of discussion which we are planning for today which is ecs is more of you know containerization service on aws and we all must be knowing when we talk about cloud computing everything is virtual so this entire cloud platform as the customer you don't need to have any physical infrastructure at all when you migrate your infrastructure from your on-premises to your cloud right everything is virtual in nature so under your compute service to meet your business compute requirements you have services like ec2 you have services like aws lambda you have services like ecs ecs is one of the service which is mainly talking about containerization on aws right so moving a bit ahead now talking about what is kubernetes what is kubernetes so kubernetes also known as k8s kubernetes also known as k8 when i say eight it's numerical eight k8 kubernetes okay there's also another way to represent kubernetes it's an open source system for automating deployment scaling management of your containerized applications and work okay i repeat kubernetes which is also known as k8s it's also represented in this way k8s it's an open source system for automating deployment scaling and management of containerized it basically groups containers that make up an application into list of logical units for the ease of management right and discovery that is what your kubernetes is in very simple language it groups 
multiple containers that make up an application into logical unit for easy management and discovery. It also helps in scaling and since it's an open source, it gives you freedom advantage of your on premises hybrid or public cloud infrastructure, letting you effortlessly move your workloads whenever and wherever you want. OK, so Kubernetes have a lot of you know features and functionalities. It also helps in service discovery, load balancing, storage orchestration, right? Then automatic bin packaging, batch execution, right? It does horizontal scaling, self healing. So there are a lot of options which Kubernetes gives you or functionalities which Kubernetes gives you. So all in all, it basically makes your containerized platform a simpler and easier. So here it is. As I said, it is an open source container management tool which automate container deployment, container scaling and descaling, and container load balancing. Some features of Kubernetes, as I was telling, automatic bin packing, service discovery and load balancing, storage orchestration, self healing, secret and configuration management, batch execution, horizontal scaling, automatic rollbacks and rollouts are also possible on this, right? Talking about each of this platform one by one, starting with, you know, automatic rollbacks and rollouts. So when I say automatic rollouts and rollbacks, Kubernetes allows you to progressively roll out changes to your application or its configuration. While it continuously monitors the health of your application to ensure that it does not impact your instances, right? Or kill your instances, okay? And at the same time, if something goes wrong, Kubernetes will automatically roll back the changes for you. It does not require any manual efforts there, okay? So you push a change, it will not do it in one single go. It uploads or it updates those changes progressively, continuously monitoring the health of your application. And at the same time, it ensures, right? It ensures that it does not impact the performance of your application or kill the instance, right? And if something is found to be impacting, something is not going as expected, Kubernetes is intelligent enough to roll back for you, right? Then talking about horizontal scaling. Horizontal scaling, you know, those who are already familiar with the cloud platforms, they must be understanding Horizontal scaling, when I talk about, it is an option to scale your application up and down depending on the requirement, right? So it allows you to scale your application up and down with a simple command or through a UI or automatically based on the CPU usage and other stuff. Then talking about batch execution. Batch execution is basically a method where Kubernetes can manage your batch and CI workloads, replacing containers that fails. So then moving a bit ahead, talking about secret and configuration management. Secret and configuration management is nothing but deploy and update secrets and application configuration without you having to rebuild entire image or without exposing secrets into your stack configuration, okay? the ability or the method where it allows you to deploy and update secrets and application configuration without you having to rebuild the entire image and without exposing secret in your stack configuration is what your secret and configuration management is all about self-healing when we talk about if certain containers stop certain containers fail then it restarts that container that fails and replaces and reschedules containers when a nodes in your Kubernetes platform die or kills the container that don't respond to your user defined health checks. When I talk about self healing, please understand one thing. If certain nodes don't respond to the health check parameters, right, then it automatically kills those and also does not advertise those containers, those nodes to the client until they are 
up and running again or until they are back to normal operations. That is your cell healing. Then when I talk about storage orchestration, again, it automatically mounts the storage system of your choice, whether from your local storage or, you know, your public cloud providers such as your GCP, AWS, Azure. Okay. So it, automat it automatically mounts those. Two, okay. And talking about service discovery and load balancing. So service discovery and load balancing is nothing but discovering the healthy pods or nodes. So Kubernetes gives each of the pods their own IP addresses and a single DNS name for a set of pods and can load balance across them. So you have multiple pods. All these pods will be given certain IP addresses and they will be mapped to one single DNS. So it can easily load balance and discover the healthy one. An automated bin packaging. Basically, it places container based on the resource requirement and other constraints. So it allows you to mix critical and best effort workloads in order to drive up utilization and save on your resources. It is an optimized utilization of your resources which you get to enjoy when you are using Kubernetes. So now that was a brief summary about various features of Kubernetes. Rise of containers. So we all know traditional virtual machine. This is a standard format. You have physical server on top of that you have hypervisor and on top of that you run your virtual machine. This is of your VM one. This is your VM two and each of this VM each of this virtual machine have their own operating system which makes your machine slightly heavier right you have to define guest operating system on individual vms right so this makes your infra slightly heavier but when we go with a containerized option here what happens you have your physical host you have your hypervisor then you have a common guest operating system and a docker engine right on top of that you run your binaries and libraries right and on top of that your application gets deployed so it just has the application and it dependencies while it is sharing the guest kernel and other containers so it does not have to you know have a dedicated operating system for each of this app. rather you have one single guest operating system on top of that you know you run your application so this way containers makes your application lighter this way it makes them lighter and easy so this is how containers evolved because prior to containerization we had a concept of vms right so from vms we understood that you know on each of virtual machine having a dedicated guest operating system require a lot of storage a lot of consumption processing and other capabilities but with this you know concept of containers coming to play you're making your application more lighter you can easily deploy them right so docker and kubernetes now talking about docker and kubernetes build and deploy container that is where your docker will come to play docker defines how to coordinate and schedule multiple containers how do containers communicate with each other how to scale container instance how to deal with failed containers all of that is taken care by Docker. okay and manage entire of this with Q. so you have kernel on top of that you run your containers at edureka it's a structured learning so this is a brief about kubernetes certification training course where you know in total you have seven sessions talking one by one in detail about each of this elements we start here with kubernetes core concept and networking then moving towards kubernetes services and scheduling talking about kubernetes controllers persistent storage in kubernetes securing the cluster so we talk about the hands-on and other factors right and last session is dedicated for troubleshooting the cluster you know at the end of the every module every session there is a hands-on okay so this is a brief about the kubernetes certification training course at Eureka. In AWS, there is a service called as EKS, which is 
Elastic Container Service ECS for running Kubernetes on AWS. Amazon Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes, Amazon EKS, is a managed service that makes it easy for you to run Kubernetes on AWS without needing to stand up or maintain your own Kubernetes control plane. Right in Kubernetes, we have control plane and a data plane, so you don't have to go about you know control plane management it is all taken care of by aws and it is secured by default compatible with standard kubernetes it works with kubernetes community that is open source so getting started with elastic container service for kubernetes it goes in this manner you provision an amazon eks cluster deploy your worker nodes using your cloud formation that is a terraform based scripts kind of thing which you get to quickly deploy your infrastructure connect to your eks Right and run Kubernetes applications on EKS. This is an architecture of EKS. Like you can have an EKS VPC customer VPC, right? And you can have an ENI Elastic Network interface between two VPCs. You have a load balancer, so you can have EKS control plane. So your worker node traffic could be forwarded here, and you have a network load balancer which does load balancing right towards the control plane and you know management of traffic takes place that's it from my side for our today's session thank you so much for your time and patience appreciate it i wish you all a great day